Do 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 do. Battery lessons with Tim. Meow. Well, if you found this video and you haven't really learned how to throw yet, stop right there. No point in watching the rest of it. <laughs> um, if you have thrown and you want to improve how fast you throw and the efficiency of your throwing, keep watching and we're going to get right to it. So let's get to right to why we want to throw quicker and more efficiently. And I think the biggest thing for me is creativity. That if you take an hour to make a piece on the wheel, that you're much less likely to experiment on it or play with it. Whereas if you make, you know, 60 pieces in that same hour, that you've got this, you've got these canvases that you can play on. And I see over and over in my own work, when I have lots of things to work on, I take a lot more risk and grow a lot more. If I'm working on one thing, I don't take those risks. And I don't grow nearly as quick. I see it with my students as well. So the number one reason I would say to learn how to throw quicker and more efficiently is for your creativity. That it gives you much more, a huge range of what you can do with stuff if it's not precious. And then the second and not so important one is just an efficiency in material. That if you're, if you're doing it um, quickly and you're getting the most out of your, each ball of clay, then you have to wedge less, you have to reclaim less, you have to buy less material, which makes things a little, a little easier on the pocketbook and all, and the time frame. So, but we're gonna we're gonna go to it. So this was a piece that I was I I found in, in the El Trashola to give you an idea of what we're shooting at when we are throwing efficiently. All right. So if you're just coming to this one, you've probably seen other videos in which I've done the centering and regular pulling. This one's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna kind of do the same, same centering deal. We're gonna get it stuck. And we're gonna open it, or we're gonna center it. And homogenize it. And in terms of working quickly, I had that wheel going as fast as it will go so that this part gets done quicker. If you move your hands this fast on a slow wheel, then it's not gonna do the same thing. My wheel is kind of cranking there. Once it's centered, Opening it up um, is going to be a little bit different. Well, the opening it up, pretty much the same. But we're going to flatten it out further than if we were just normally pulling. I'm going to go past. I'm going to go way out there. I'm going to go back and run my hand to smooth it once. And this is so that when I pull, I'm going to pull up and towards the middle. All right, some, some of the things that are going to change now also is my thumb position. I haven't really talked about that yet. This thumb is gonna run on the outside at like six o'clock or wherever my thumb will reach depending on the size of the piece. It's kind of like a downrigger. It's gonna be used to stabilize this hand. If this is here, then this hand is less likely to twist like this or slide around. It, can, it stabilizes, it's kind of like a training wheel or an outrigger on our canoe. The inside hand, I'm gonna push with the pads of my finger still, but this finger up here is going to start to do some funny stuff. It can go on top of the piece, and it'll act as I push, as I pull up, I'm kind of centering it as I move up with this finger on top. Super fancy. Also, where we're starting here, on the outside, I'm going to pull up and towards the middle. And that will give this bottom part here, this part here will be the corner of my pot and not out here. So I won't get left with as much of a roundness in the bottom. So here's what it looks like. My, I've got my fingers down here, and my fingers on top, and I'm gonna to push with both, and I'm gonna move up and towards the middle. And this keeps that whole thing centered and level and flat as I go. And I'm gonna wet it inside and out. Get all the way down to the bottom in there, and I'm gonna push underneath all that, and then lift that up. Right. So this is about two and a half pounds. So that's pull number two. And with two and a half pounds, I should get everything out of three pulls. Like that's, that's the goal. So I'm gonna wet it again. I've got my whole hand on the inside. I'm gonna press with those. This one's gonna be kind of like the downrigger on the inside now. It's gonna stabilize this hand. I'm gonna make sure that I'm pushing directly across from each other. I'm gonna move the last of that corner in the bottom up and into the wall.
Okay, so we're gonna cut that one to get the water out of the bottom. Here we. <laughs> this is one of the things that, if you wanna, if you wanna feel better about your pieces when you, well, I don't have my little, I don't have my knife. Is that you cut this bottom off before you cut it in half? That way, when you cut it in half, it looks like you did a better job. <laughs> Pro tip. All right. And this is what we're looking for. And you say, oh, but Mr. Tim, it's so thick at the bottom. And really, I mean, do I have, I'll have my ruler close. It's not super thick. It's less than the thickness of my finger by almost a half. And this part here is what needs to hold up the rest of the piece. It's not efficient if you wreck half the pieces that you make. So you've got to finish the pieces. This is within acceptable things because of what I normally do to the foot. That comes in a little bit here. And this was a smaller piece. The bottom gets trimmed that little bit to thin it out. But they start out pretty much, I mean, this is a little bit, but pretty much like that. So we're going to do that kind of demo again. But first, well, we're going to turn, we're going to change the camera angle. So this is about the same size ball of clay. And I'm gonna let you see kind of where my hand starts, especially on that first pull, how far it goes um, from the middle, or from the outside to the middle. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. I'm going to go even wider. I'm going to wet it inside and out. And I'm going to, you can see this hand. I've got my finger on top now. <clears throat> this is starting right against the wheel head. I'm going to pull. I'm going to kind of angle everything. I'm going to move all that angle to the middle. Go back and wet this. Inside and out, top to bottom. Push at the bottom, move it up into the wall. And then lift it up. Now, what's harder to see on a piece like this is what I call double bumping. And it's hard to see at all in general. But when I'm making a pull, my finger is making a dent. And I'm gonna kinda of take this cylinder as an opportunity to show that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do kind of a wrong pull. I'm gonna pull up quicker than I should by double the speed. Okay, and you got to see how much that grew, and that was this, that was a inefficient pull in terms of my pressure and everything, but you can see how I'm left with a big dent that goes up the piece. That big dent is a big problem. That's inefficient use of my pressure. So a good pull will actually hit the peak of the pull from the previous rotation. So when I make a dent here and I move up, I'm making a, a indentation and I'm also making a raised part above it. And that raised part is what I wanna hit with the next rotation. So when I say a double bump, I'm making one bump and as I'm making that bump, I'm hitting the bump from before. Double bumping, totally makes sense. Um, the inside will also have that same kind of thickness of bump. See how wide those bumps are? And you can actually see, if you look at the cross section of the wall, that there's a thickness issue. It goes thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. And that goes up in a spiral for the whole wall, which makes shaping like little neck bottles and extreme shoulders and stuff harder because you're always gonna have one side that's thicker than the other. For example, whatever is thick here on the opposite side is gonna be thin. There's no getting away from that because it's a spiral all the way up. So, to eliminate that, I'm going to do another ball here. We're going to do what's called double bumping. 
So I'm gonna try, without doing the that really weird first pull, so that I can get the most examples out of this clay to show you kind of what I'm talking about. It's gonna start off with a normal cylinder. I'm gonna make one good pull to kind of set up a wall so that we can see this well. Now what you want to look at is the shadows. Not where my finger is, but watch the shadow. So it's going to get a bump and my finger is going to hit that bump per rotation. Now that bump is going to be determined by the size of the tool that you're using to make it. If you make a little finger prick point, that bump is going to be really small which means your pulls are going to go up really slowly if you make if you're using like a giant sponge or something to make that pull your pull your bump is going to be really wide and you're going to have to move up really quick and neither of those are as efficient as getting it just right and i found that just right is the side of my knuckle and everybody's side of the knuckle is about the same size all right here we go i'm going to push you can see that bump and i'm hitting that bump each time and then what's left behind is almost flat even though what comes after the pull is more of a dent. I was concentrating looking at the wall and not looking at the piece. We're gonna do that one more time here. We're wetting it. So at the bottom I'm squeezing and that bump is hitting or my pull is hitting the bump before it. making it really nice, <laughs> really nice and thin. But you get the idea, that's what we want. We want that first bump that we make, that, that, that kind of like a wave that forms in front of our finger to get hit by the one, by the next rotation. And that makes it go up quick. And that should, you should be able to do most of your size pots, almost, almost everything I do in three pulls, almost everything. Two pulls for most things, one pull for some things, but most of the time it's usually two pulls. And if you can shoot for two pulls, then things are gonna stop taking five minutes and start making two minutes or one minute. And if creativity and growth is your goal, those kind of things will help. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you guys haven't already hit the like button, slam that like button. If you're watching for the first time or you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.